Welcome home, church. Well, good morning. It is so good to see you guys. Thanks for braving the cold. It is freezing outside. I'm not a fan, personally, but it's okay. I guess it's Christmassy. <laughs> um, maybe that was too honest now that I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. Good morning to our online family. We're so thankful you guys are tuning in with us. Um, we are officially one week away from Christmas. That is absolutely crazy, but what an exciting time that it has been um, just walking through Advent with all of you and um, growing closer in just God's word and Jesus' story. Um, and so we're going to continue doing that this morning as Pastor Mark talks about um, our last topic in this series before we get to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And so I invite you to lean in, um, to tune in. I think it's a great uh, message that I'm excited to, to hear again. And so um, before we get started and before we um, get the rest of the the juicy things going. <laughs> Let's say hi to someone next to you. Maybe say hi to someone that you do not know. Maybe find a friend that you know super well and give them a big hug and say good morning. Oh goodness. Welcome home to our online family. Folks, we're so glad you guys are tuning in. Um 
man, I'm just spewing off of my mind here, but it is so good to see you guys this morning. Uh, I just want you to know that we are thankful to have you guys tuning in online, whether it is your first time tuning in or you are a longtime member of St. Paul's, we are just thankful to have you. I want to invite you to say hi to the chat this morning. If you're tuning in on a device where you can type in the chat, say good morning to your fellow online folks. Um, what are you most excited about for this week? What is something that you are genuinely looking forward to for this Christmas season? Do you have any family plans or friend plans, or are you just going to have a time of rest. Um, Drop it in the chat. Let us know. We are hoping to create a community online. So we are thankful for you guys. Um, We look forward to to you guys tuning in each and every week. Please know that we are praying for you every single week. If you have a prayer, you can drop it in the chat or you can email it to pastormark at spldecatur.org. Thank you guys. All right, before we keep going, let us just bow our heads in prayer. God, I just thank you this morning. I thank you for your son. I thank you for your sacrifice, God. I thank you that because of your sacrifice, we can be here today and praise you. Lord, there's purpose in the people in this room, God, and there's a reason why we are here this morning um, to give you glory, um, to praise you as we prepare our hearts for the coming of your son. So Lord, I come this morning um, with an attitude of, of um, humility of just being so thankful for the story that you've laid upon us. Um, Be with us as we praise you. Be with Pastor Mark. Speak through him, Lord. Um, And we love you, Lord. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's sing. Be quiet. We shout. 
finish this next song, I was uh, thinking about these words last night, actually, and it hit me as I was thinking about the chorus that we're about to sing. Behold him, the Son of God. Um, Hosanna, praise his name, lift him high, see what God has done. Um, we're about to sing those words, and, and I was thinking about this song and how the story, as the song keeps going, it kind of goes from Christmas into Easter within this one song, but I don't know why I never really pictured this as a, a Christmas moment, but I was thinking about Luke 2 and what we've been learning in our Advent Wednesdays, and I was realizing that the shepherds, when they saw Angel Gabriel, when they when they were realizing the Messiah had come and all these things were happening, and they were just in awe, and so they were just kind of still and and realizing what was going on before they went and told everyone. This song says, "Behold him, behold him! Look up your eyes, see the Son of Heaven." And I don't know why, but it didn't hit me until last night that um, what. What a word that that is, that those shepherds are probably feeling that, of just beholding the Son of God and in such awe of the magnitude of that moment. And so I just wanted to kind of tell you what I was realizing in this song of how, yes, it's going to go through Jesus' story of all the way into um, him dying on the cross and being risen again. But I feel like in the chorus, we're also hitting on just the magnitude of um, realizing um, Christ is born. And so as we sing this song, I just want you to, to kind of Think about her, the Christ story and sing it in that way. This is the word here in the flesh, living among the meek and lowly, the voice of God is every breath, salvation of the
things that we should have done. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And Lord, we recognize that we justly deserve your present and your eternal punishment. So Lord, we come before you today and we ask for forgiveness. We pray that you would make us new. Remind us again of your washing us in our baptism. That you've called us loved and forgiven and made new. Help us to remember that you have died for us. That you bore our sin and our shame. And almighty God, we know that there there are people in our midst who are hurting and in need of you. And so Lord, we lift, we lift them up to you. We pray for Danny and Sandra and Harry. We lift up John and Tanya and Judy and Rick. Lord, we pray that you would bring your love and your healing to them, that they would know that you are there with them, that you are working for them and with them. And God, we pray that you would bring people uh, around them to support them and care for them. And Lord, we recognize that there are people struggling through grief and loss right now. We especially lift up the family and friends of Kurt Grimmel as they mourn his loss. And for the family and friends of Thomas Ryan as they mourn his loss. Lord, we pray that you would Surround them with your love and your grace. Remind them of your empty tomb. Remind them of your resurrection that they might be certain of their loved one's resurrection. And Lord, we recognize that in this world, there are people who do not grieve like us. There are people who mourn with no hope. And we pray that you would give them hope. Help them to know that you are that you are for them, that you are with them, that you love them. Lord, we pray that you would do mighty things in this church and in this world. Lord, we lift up all these things to you, knowing that you are good we're bold to pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. In just a moment, we're going to collect our offering. But I just got to tell you, uh, this past week, I spent a week subbing um, at the high school, at the LSA, teaching religion. And I found out two things real quick. One, I am not built to be a teacher. (laughs) I love those youth. I love spending time with them for an hour or two on a Wednesday night and then sending them home. And uh, that joking aside, I found that the LSA, the work that God is doing in those teachers and in those students is incredible. God is working mightily in each and every one of those teachers and each and every one of those students. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, just throughout this next week, be praying with me, be praying for the parents of the LSA, be praying for uh, our teachers of the LSA, for the kids of the LSA, that they would just take a moment to recognize that God is doing mighty things in their work. Uh, uh, God, God is doing mighty things in their lives too. So um, with that being said, one of our ministries that we participate in here is the LSA. And as we um, give, um, as we continue to give of our tithes and offerings, uh, we're doing so in support of that ministry as well. So uh, let's go into our time of offering. Welcome home, church. Whether you've been here many times or this is your first time, we are so glad to have you with us. What an incredible week it has been. Welcoming parents and caretakers and serving 2,700 children in partnership with Dev Incorporated, Salvation Army, Northeast Community Fund, and Toys for Tots, serving families in need in our community through Christmas care and share. Many cups of coffee and treats, lots of conversation and prayer shared with people as they waited their turn, a blessing to serve and love 217. New connections were made and conversations that revealed how much the youth in our community need positive opportunities, loved by many parents who want better experiences for their kids. It was a blessing to show the love of Jesus and help many breathe a little easier this Christmas. And as you make your own plans for Christmas this year, I encourage you to consider who you will welcome to worship along with you. It's only a week away, so don't wait. Grab some invite cards and make the ask to that family member, friend, or neighbor on your mind. Come and experience God's amazing love through his son, Jesus, as we worship together on Christmas Eve at 5 or 7 p.m., including candlelight and silent night. Or come Christmas Day at 10 a.m. for a traditional Christmas experience with communion. All of the information you need as you make a plan and invite others is available at spldecatororg slash Christmas. Additionally, you can add a little more cheer to your season by supporting the placing of the poinsettias. There is a variety of colors and sizes available to you with 8-inch plants or for $15 or 10-inch for $18. You can place it in honor or memory of someone or in thanks giving to God. Take yours home after any time Christmas Day worship. Visit the display in the fellowship area today. There's a lot of life here in this place following Christmas. You can look forward to the winter session of F3 Family Faith Formation beginning January 11th. You can check out all of the classes available to you and register at spldecatororg slash forms. We also have a huge opportunity to build up the youth of our community and love 217 through upward basketball and cheer beginning January 7th. 
We still have need for at least 13 basketball coaches, five cheer coaches, referees, and 15 devotion leaders to cover all of the age groups. We need people to serve here at SPL to help with greeting and concessions throughout the season, January 14th through March 11th, as we host the third grade, fourth, fifth grade, and sixth through eighth grade games here on Saturdays. Right now, there are 360 kids registered. 148 do not have a current church home. So won't you consider making a big impact for Jesus on the kids of our community? I hope so. Let's talk about it. All of the details about this and more are available in your worship guide and at spldecatororg slash church online. And finally, we'd love to know that you're worshiping with us. So if you're here for the first time, please take a moment to complete a first-time guest card, return it to our Welcome Center for a special gift. If you already consider yourself family, please complete a Connect card here in person or online. And as always, let us know how we can be praying for you. Hey friends, when I go to sleep at night, I don't just use one pillow. I use two. When I go to a hotel or camping and I forget one of my pillows, I'm not comfortable at all. Without a good night's sleep, I'm grumpy and I'm no fun the next day. Sleep helps our bodies in lots of ways. We can't survive without it. Kind of like my pillows. God provides comfort and rest. But I'm not just talking about rest for our bodies. I'm talking about rest for our souls. Our souls are that invisible part of us that never dies. Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus gives us rest even better than sleep. With Jesus, we don't have to be stressed or worried because we know that he has things under control and that he loves us. So when you lay your head on your pillow or pillows tonight, Remember that Jesus has the whole world in his hands. We can rest knowing that we are cared for by God. See ya. Well, Pastor Bill got to say his little thing that he was excited about of ministry that's going on. I want to lift up what Andrew is talking about, the Dove Karen share that we've got to host for the second year in a row. Just so neat to be able to use these facilities to bless people, to have conversations, and just to see how God was working, not just through the volunteers from Dove, but through our people. And uh, I know multiple different times we had people that asked if someone could come and pray with them and to just see God at work. And I don't know exactly what God's going to do from that, but I trust that he is going to bear fruit from those connections, from those prayers, from those conversations. And uh, I just look forward with expectation and I'm thankful for all of your generosity that makes things like this possible, right? To use this space to bless the people of this community and help them to experience in a real tangible way, the love of Jesus. So thank you once again for that. Uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you and I praise you. Um, it's easy to get uh, lost in all the the to-dos of this season and all that's going on and the busyness, um, help us to focus on you, uh, to, to return once again to the amazing reality of what you have done for us. How, how amazing it is that you, God, would take on human flesh, that you would become one of us, uh, that you would come to, to be here so that you could die in our place and and rise again to, to make a way for us to be with you. And that is an amazing thing. Help us not to lose the wonder of that, but may that be restored to us here in this week ahead as we celebrate your coming back then, but also look forward with hope to your coming again. Lord, meet us here today as you speak to us through your word, uh, as you remind us of how you come and meet us in the midst of our longings. And we trust you, Jesus. We pray this in your mighty and powerful name. Amen. So we've been going through over these last several weeks in preparation for Christmas, this series called Longing For, and we are talking about the different things that you and I, uh, whether right now that we're struggling with, we might be longing for or 
probably at some time or another, these deep desires of our hearts. And we've been talking about things like uh, our longing for security or significance or for uh, connection. And uh, in this, uh, we started off from the first week uh, with a few things. One was that um, these longings that we have, these desires that we have, that God, God sees them, right? That God... God hears them. He wants to meet those desires. And we also looked at scripture and saw how uh, we believe, we trust that ultimately these longings of our heart, even if they're placed in the wrong things here and now, that they are ultimately and most fully fulfilled and met in Jesus, in Jesus alone. And so we've been going through these different weeks looking at how Jesus fulfills these longings of our hearts, these desires And uh, this week, uh, we're finishing things, we're wrapping things up with uh, longing, talking about longing for rest. Uh, Is anybody longing for rest out there? I thought there might be a few of you guys. Uh, So as I thought about this idea of longing for rest, one of the things that came to my mind was this Bible passage. It's kind of an obscure one. It's one that easily uh, jump over because it's in one of those places where they're like, well, this guy lived this long and he had these people as his children. And you're like, okay, yeah, great. Uh, Can we get on to more exciting things? But there's a really important piece that's buried in the midst of this. Once again, it's easy to overlook, but it's from Genesis chapter five. And here, this is talking about, uh, the birth of Noah, you know, Noah and the ark. And it says, when Lamech had lived 182 years, he fathered a son and called his name Noah saying, out of the ground, the Lord has cursed. This one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. You see, Noah's father gave him his name, Noah, because he believed that he would be the one that God had foretold of when sin entered where the world, when brokenness came, that he would be the one to bring restoration from the brokenness of sin. That he would be the one that one day God's people would know as Messiah, but that he would be the one that was gonna set all things right, that was gonna bring this restoration that God had foretold of. And at the heart of what God was going to do through this one he was sending to bring salvation and restoration is this idea of rest. Because the name Noah actually is related to, it sounds the same as the Hebrew word for rest. So from the very beginning, even way before God's people were God's people as we know them, right? God brought his people out of Egypt. There was this expectation that the Messiah, this one that God had declared he would send to bring salvation and restoration from the brokenness of sin, that one of the main things he was bringing was rest. And we see this continued throughout the Old Testament scriptures that it points to this idea that there is this this longing for rest, to rest from the burden of the brokenness of this world and that the Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one, he would bring that in full. And we know, right, that this Messiah, that, that is fulfilled ultimately in Jesus, that Jesus coming into this world, he brings about that. And so we see here that, Jesus is the one who's bringing us this ultimate rest. Amen, sermon done, right? Sometimes we try to make it that easy, don't we? And that's what really, uh, you know, something that struck me is sometimes in these sermons where we were talking about, and I, I truly believe it, that Jesus is the one who ultimately meets that, but we we kind of just seem to, it can feel like just that Christianese answer, right? Like, oh, Jesus meets all of my needs. Okay, we're good. But when I thought about this longing for rest, I, it made me think then like, okay, how does Jesus bring us rest? I mean, in a real way, how does Jesus bring me rest in a real way? Or even more than that, really, I think at the heart of it, the question is this, can Jesus bring me the rest I'm longing for? 
can Jesus truly bring me the rest I'm longing for? Yes, I know I'm free from the burden of sin because of what Jesus has done. And I, yeah, that brings rest for my soul, but I'm just exhausted. I am just way down. I'm at the end of my rope. I don't have anything left to give. Can Jesus really bring me rest from this? You know, as I thought about that, I continued on my rabbit trail of questions. And it brought me to this question of when I say I need some rest, what do I mean? I mean, what am I really longing for? When I say I need some rest, I could use some rest. What is at the heart of that? Well, that question brought me to a couple weeks ago when Jen and I had an opportunity, an amazing blessing for the second year in a row to get away for our anniversary on a three-day trip, uh, celebrated 11 years together uh, this time. Uh, But her parents came to town. We were able to escape to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and just had a wonderful time together. But this came to my mind as I asked that question because this was a recent experience of what, of, of rest, like true rest for me. This, those three days were so life-giving and refreshing and restoring. It was amazing. And so I, I thought, okay, what was it about that experience? What was it about those days that was so restful? that truly restored me, that gave me life. And as I thought about it, what I landed on was this. It was that there were no to-dos. There were no a thousand things to get done. Yeah, we had some plans for what we might do each day and we talked about those, but you know, there wasn't like a, a rush of a, a feeling like we had to get all these things done. No huge expectations. Because of that, we were just able to be. Not have to worry about do, 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 doing, but we could just be with each other and have that time to enjoy each other's company and to connect. And that was just such a refreshing and beautiful thing to just be able to to be instead of feeling like I always had to be doing and worrying about what's the next thing and what am I forgetting? It was amazing. And you know, I think this gets at the heart of what's in our longing for rest. Is that at the heart of our longing for rest is the burden of expectations. I know you've all felt that before, right? The weight of expectations, whether from other people or from yourself, because a lot of times it's our own expectations that are some of the weightiest, uh, the things that weigh us down the most. But the burden of expectations that at times can be crushing all the to-dos, this and that, and what's next, and what should I be doing? All of those things, they weigh us down emotionally drain us and leave us exhausted. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Uh, Sorry, watch. Uh, And these things, they just drain us. They leave us just exhausted. But it's more than that. It's not just that they like exhaust us emotionally, but the burden of expectations is also the thing that I would say keeps us from actually physically stopping and engaging in rest, from stopping all the doing and just being. It's all of the to-dos that we have and we look at our list and say, there's still to-dos there, I gotta keep going. I can't stop and just be, I can't stop and rest. I can't stop and take a breath. I can't stop and just enjoy the people around me. I just have to keep going. It's the burden of expectations that keep us from rest in all of its fullness. I don't know what those burden of expectations are for you. I just, a few that I thought of, maybe it's, uh, I have to always be doing something or I'm lazy, or I have to always be doing something or else I'm not being valuable to others. Uh, Maybe it's, I'm only a good parent if my kid is always in some kind of activity, or I can't say no, because that would be rude. Maybe it's uh, crying or showing emotion is weak, so I can't do that. 
You have to always be joyful if you're a Christian. And there could be many others. I don't know what those are for you, but I know you've felt the burden of expectations before. It makes me think about when I first uh, came here as a pastor, and I don't know that this was really an external one that was communicated to me as much as something that I placed upon myself as an expectation, but there was this burden of expectation that I carried around that I thought that now I was a pastor and I was here, that everybody was looking at me to have all of the answers, that I had to know it all, and I couldn't admit that I had, I didn't know things. And this burden of expectations, I got to tell you, it made me a really horrible pastor, right? It made me not as good as God created me to be. And so I was carrying this around and it just drained me. It was exhausting to carry this burden around, it drained the life out of me and it made me so I was a worse father and husband as well. So as I think about this, I wonder what expectations are weighing you down right now? What expectations are just crushing you and keeping you from the rest that God has for you? As I thought about this idea of uh, the burden of expectations and how it weighs us down and leaves us longing for rest, uh, I thought of this passage, which uh, Miss Kristen highlighted in her uh, kids' message from Matthew chapter 11. It's these words that Jesus said. It's actually an invitation that he gives to those that were listening then, but also to you and I even now. And this is what he says. He says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, all of you who are weighed down by this burden of expectations, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, Jesus gives this invitation. He says, if you are carrying this heavy load of expectations and you're exhausted, come to me. I will give you rest. It's a beautiful invitation. He says, I am the source of the rest you are longing for. And it's interesting after this, how he says, though, he's going to bring that rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. And I think, I think we don't quite understand this nowadays what he actually is talking about here. I mean, I think most of us realize that Jesus isn't saying, take my center of an egg upon you. Uh, He's not talking about that. And so because of that, uh, and thanks to Gene Mueller for helping me find this, I brought an object here so you could see just what a yoke looks like. This is a yoke. And what it was used for is you'd put it over the shoulders of a couple oxen and you put the loop around their head, necks and you tie them to it and they would pull a plow or a wagon, right? It's for them to bear a burden. And we might understand that that's what a yoke was, right? To bear a burden. But I think what we actually often hear in this passage is, hey, I'm gonna come exchange my heavy burden. I'm gonna give that to you, Jesus. And then you're gonna give me a light burden that I still have, I have these things to do still. And then I'm gonna go about my way and you're gonna go about your way, right? And we may wonder like, okay, how is that going to help me if Jesus is still giving me this burden to carry? But it's not this exchange in this solo thing. What it is, is this, right? That Jesus is inviting us into an ongoing relationship and connection with him, that we would be yoked with him. And the burden becomes light because Jesus is pulling along with us. Jesus is carrying the weight of our burdens and he's inviting us into this relationship where it's not as much about, to do, about the to-dos. It's not about the to-dos, it's about the being with God. It's about being with Jesus, right? In connection with him. And as we do that, we learn from him and he, he helps us to find that rest for our souls in the sufficiency of what he has done for us this ongoing walk with Jesus. That's where we find rest for our souls because Jesus is bearing our burdens for us as we walk along with him in connection with him. And here's the thing, you and I, I think often we 
We want to just keep carrying the burden ourselves. We'd rather have the yoke where it's just on our shoulders, right? Jesus says, hey, come to me, walk with me. I'll, I'll bear your burdens. And we're like, eh, it's okay, Jesus. You know, I, I think I can do this on my own. You know, I, I really need to do pull some weight, Jesus. I mean, I need to deserve this grace of yours somehow, but that's not how it is, right? Jesus offers you rest, this freedom from the burden of expectations. And he does that because it's not about to-dos. We're freed from the to-dos because what is at the heart of it is that Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it all. He's paid the price for our sin. He's made for us a, a way for us to come and be in relationship with God. What we've needed most, Jesus has provided. And this is what sets Christianity apart every other world religion. It's not about a bunch of to-dos that gain us and earn us our value and our promise of salvation and life, but it's about what Jesus has already done that has communicated great value to you and I, that it's an unchangeable thing. And now how we live, the things we do, it's not because we're trying to earn value, but it's because of the immense value God has declared of us. It's because we're trying to live in this new identity that he's given us. It's lived in response to life with Jesus and his great love for us. If you remember back to our grace series, I talked about how grace is a gift, right? We talked about grace is this free gift from God. And because it's free, it doesn't come with expectations. There's not anything you do to earn it. And there's not an expectation, right, that you have to do something to to repay Jesus for it. Yes, Jesus gives us an invitation. He gives us an invitation to come. Walk in this beautiful life that I've won for you. Walk in this new life. Walk with me. Do life together with me. Learn from me. Live in a way that is what it looks like to be a child of God. He invites us into that. But there's not that expectation. It's the invitation. So Jesus frees us from this burden of expectations. We can rest in knowing we're secure in Jesus. We can rest in knowing that he has uh, made a way for us to be with God, that we are free from our sin. And this gives rest for our souls, but it's not just the spiritual freedom, the spiritual rest that God gives us. God also gives us space. He gives us the blessing, the gift of actually being able to stop and rest, to just be, to be free from all the to-dos, to be able to say, okay, let's stop, let's take a breath. Let's find things to do that are gonna refresh and restore. And so I wonder what if rest was an expectation, not an exception? I'm not saying what if rest was another to do on the list, but what if rest we treat it in the same way that we do everything else where that we make, we make room for it in our schedules, right? You know, those unexpected to do's that come up, we do all we can to make room for them because, oh, we just have to do those things. We're, we're glad to move around our schedules for all of those things. What if rest was the same way? What if we made room in our schedules to rest, to enjoy this gift that God has given us? Jesus Jesus even said the Sabbath, uh, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. This is a gift from God that is part of this rhythm of, of living life together with Jesus of being able to know that because our value is secure in Jesus, we can stop. We can stop from our doing and just rest to enjoy those around us, to be rejuvenated and refreshed. It's part of that rhythm of living life with Jesus. Friends, if you're longing for rest today, look no, far, no, look no further than that baby in a manger, our savior Jesus, the one who would go to the cross the one who's already borne your, who already has carried your burdens, the weight of your sin and continues to walk with you. He sets you free, live in that rest. 
This is the beauty of what the angels declared at Jesus' birth. Say glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those who, with whom he's pleased. That God brought this peace, this shalom, this wholeness, right? The rest of knowing we're, we're whole in Jesus and what he's doing. Friends, I know things are busy. There's a lot of to-dos on your list in the weeks ahead. But I pray that you're able to find space, to make space, to rest, to rest in Jesus, to be with him, to walk with him, to be in connection with him, but also to just be, to be with those you love, to enjoy their company and the connection there, to be refreshed and rejuvenated. This is a gift of our God. I pray that you would enter in to this invitation that God, that Jesus gives. Come to me and I will give you rest. Amen.
This is my we sing it all out. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. Oh God, this is our surrender. join with those around you, near you. Let people know that they're part of the family of God here. As we speak this blessing of our God, may our Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May our Lord look upon you with his unending favor. May you be filled with his peace, find rest in him. Amen. Friends, go in the joy and peace of our God. It's great to worship with you. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Do whatever you